We're going to start our unit on torque by analyzing some situations that involve seesaws. So in this problem, a student places three blocks on a seesaw. The weights of the blocks are shown over here in the question. Block A is 3 newtons, block B is 2 newtons, block C is C newton is 4 newtons, and the seesaw itself is 6 newtons. So let's start by drawing those weights. So we're going to draw the weights down from the center of each object. So object A has a weight right here. Object B has a weight right here. Object C has a weight right here. Now for the seesaw itself, so the seesaw itself stretches 100 centimeters. We're going to draw its weight down from the center of the seesaw. So for this whole seesaw, we're going to draw its weight from a single point at the center of the seesaw, which is the 50 centimeter mark. Now notice that's the weight of the seesaw itself. It's not the weight of this fulcrum here. It's the weight of the seesaw itself. So let me redraw that from the 50 centimeter mark. All right. So our job is to figure out how much torque each one of these weights is causing. So we're going to use the equation that torque equals force times radius. So for each one, I'm going to write down radius and torque. We use the Greek letter tau for torque. All right, so let's start with block A. Block A has a weight of 3 newtons. Now, to get the torque, we have to do the force times the radius. So whenever we do one of these problems, we need to pick the point that we are going to measure the radius from. In this problem, it says answer all questions relative to the fulcrum. And in fact, that makes the most sense, because in the end, we're going to try to figure out which way the object tips. And the tipping point is going to be the fulcrum itself. So we're going to circle the 50 centimeter mark. So that's going to be our fulcrum. All right, so to get the radius, we're going to measure from our reference point out to object A, and that would be a dif distance of 50 centimeters, from the 0 to the 50. And I can do 3 newtons times 50 centimeters and get 150 newton centimeters as my torque. So just like we multiply the numbers, we multiply the units as well. So let's go ahead and fill that out on the left side, 150 newton centimeters for the torque. All right, it says block B is 2 newtons. So for block B, the radius is right here. So from 50 to 60, that is 10 centimeters. And so that gives me a torque of 20 newton centimeters. All right, for block C, the weight is 4 newtons, and the radius measured from the center, or measured from my rotation point to my force is from 50 to 90 is 40 centimeters. So multiplying 4 times 40, I get 160 newton centimeters. And lastly, for the weight of the seesaw itself. It says the seesaw itself is 6 newtons, but since the center of the seesaw is lined up with the fulcrum, this force is right at the radius, is right at the tipping point, so it's going to have no radius and is providing no torque. This makes total sense. If the seesaw is centered, then the seesaw isn't really trying to make this object, um, make the system tip one way or the other. All right, so let's fill out those next three answers. For block B, the torque caused by block B was 20 newton centimeters. The torque caused by block C was 160 newton centimeters. And in this case, since the seesaw, since the fulcrum was at the center of the seesaw, we get zero newton centimeters for the torque caused by the seesaw itself. All right, the next question asks me, what will happen to the seesaw? To figure out this question, I need to look at how much torque is on each side of my rotation point. So I'm going to draw a line down the middle right here and say, okay, on the left side, 
I have 150 newton centimeters. On the right side, I'm going to combine those two and get 180 newton centimeters. This means I have more torque on the right hand side, not just because I have two boxes over there or more weight over there, but it's really the amount of torque we have over there. So on the right side I have 180 newton centimeters, that's more than 150 newton centimeters on the left, so my answer is that this is, my seesaw is going to tip to the right. You may get different answers in yours. And the net torque, that's how much more torque is on one side or the other. So I'm going to do 180 minus 150 and I get 30 newton centimeters. All right, let's go ahead and move down to another problem. So you'll notice in this problem we have to be a little bit more careful because the fulcrum is not centered. So we'll learn how to deal with that. But let's start out the same way. We're going to draw the weight for block A and write down weight, radius, and torque. We'll draw the weight for block B and write weight, radius, and torque. And then we'll draw the weight of the seesaw itself. Remember we're drawing the weight of the seesaw, not the fulcrum, because the seesaw is in green, the seesaw is part of the tipping system. So in this case, or in every case, we're going to draw the weight of the seesaw at the 50 centimeter mark. However, since once again it says answer all questions relative to the fulcrum, and the fulcrum is what I call the tipping point, we're going to circle the fulcrum itself. So this time, since the seesaw isn't centered on the fulcrum, it is going to cause a torque. So it says block A is 6 newtons. Now counting my radius, I'm going to measure from the 40 centimeters to the 10 centimeters. That's a distance of 30 centimeters giving me a radius of 180 newton centimeters. For block B, I measure a radius of 40 centimeters, and the problem tells me that block B is 2 newtons. It's over on the left side. Multiplying those, I get 80 newton centimeters. This time the seesaw itself is 8 newtons. The center of the seesaw is 10 centimeters away from the fulcrum. So my radius is 10 centimeters and gives me a torque of 80 newton centimeters. All right, so what's really happening there is that's kind of a, a fancy way of calculating. Okay, I see that more of this seesaw is over on the right of the fulcrum. And so I can, when I just draw the weight down from the center, that tells me kind of how much the seesaw itself is causing this to try to tip to the right. All right, so next I want to draw a line down the middle just to help me see how much torque is on each side. So on the left side, I have a torque of 180 newton centimeters. On the right side, I have 80 and 80, which combine to make 160 newton centimeters. Just adding those together. All right, so let's go ahead and answer some questions on the left side. So block A caused a torque of 180 newton centimeters. Block B, 80 newton centimeters. The seesaw itself caused a torque of 80 newton centimeters as well. This seesaw has more torque on the left side, so 180 newton centimeters is greater than 160 newton centimeters on the right side. So this seesaw is going to tip to the left and the magnitude of the net torque, I'm going to do 180 minus 160, and that gives me 20 newton centimeters. All right, we have one more to take a look at. So this problem says, a student places blocks on a 100 centimeter long seesaw as shown, and is trying to determine where to place block C, which has a five newton weight, such that the seesaw balances. All right, so let's start off the same way as always and draw our force down from the center of each object. So here's block A, so I'm gonna write weight, radius, and torque. It says block A is one newton. Block B, 
I can write weight, radius, and torque. In block B is 5 newtons. Again, the weights of the blocks are over there in the problem. Now block C, I don't know where to draw block C's weight yet because she's going to put it on there to try to balance the seesaw. But I do know that for the seesaw, I can draw the weight down from the 50 centimeter mark. So the seesaw itself was 8 newtons. I can tell that the seesaw itself is not going to cause any torque because the fulcrum is centered. But let me go ahead and circle the tipping point right there. All right, so if I measure out the radiuses, I know that block A is 50 centimeters from the rotation point. 50 times 1 gives me 50 newton centimeters for the torque. Block B is 40 centimeters from the rotation point give me a torque of 200 newton centimeters and the weight of the seesaw, the seesaw is centered so its weight was right at the fulcrum giving me a radius and torque of zero. Let's go ahead and write these down. So for block A cause a torque of 50 newton centimeters block B 200 newton centimeters and block uh, the seesaw's own weight causes no torque. All right, so the key word in the problem was we want this seesaw to balance. To make a seesaw balance, I need the same amount of torque on both sides. So I know that block C needs to be on the left-hand side. So for block C, it has to be on the left. Be again, because I want to make 200 newton centimeters on each side. Right now, I don't have enough torque on the left side. So for block A, I'm going to write or block C, I'm going to write down weight, radius, and torque. I know the weight of block C was given to me in the problem as five newtons. And this time, I don't know the radius because I don't know where block C is being placed, but I do know the torque. So I know I need 200 newton centimeters on each side. because block B um, provided that torque, block A's was less than that. So I'm looking for 50 plus something gives me 200. And that something, really we're just going to subtract those two, is 150 newton centimeters. So to make 200 newton centimeters on the left hand side, I need to put 150 more on the left because I already have 50. Now we can rearrange the torque equation. So we know torque equals force times radius divide both sides by force and I get that torque over force equals radius and so my radius would be 150 divided by 5 or 30 centimeters so block C needs to cause 150 newton centimeters of torque and so block C's radius needs to be 30 centimeters. Now be careful, that doesn't mean we're going to place block C at the 30 centimeter mark. That means that block C is 30 centimeters away from the fulcrum. So if I go 30 centimeters to the left of the fulcrum, then I know I can put block C right here on the 20 centimeter mark. So block C is going to go right there. at the 20 centimeter mark. All right, the last question says, what is the magnitude of the normal force at the fulcrum after C is added? So there is one force that we haven't been drawing on our system. So let me draw C's weight right there, because we haven't drawn this normal force at the center. So we've really been looking at torques, because torques torque is what determines rotation. But in this case, the torques balance, and the forces have to balance as well. To balance the forces, don't look at what side each thing is on. Just look at the directions they're pointing, just like we did in all the previous units. So I have one, two, three, four weights pointing downwards, and the normal force needs to balance out all of those weights. So the normal force 
is going to be 1 plus 5 plus 8 plus another 5, which gives me 19 newtons for the normal force. All right, you might have noticed that we haven't been drawing the normal force before. The reason we do that is if we say that the fulcrum, if we're circling the fulcrum and measuring all radiuses from the fulcrum, then every single time that normal force has a radius of zero and a torque of zero, so it's not affecting the rotation.